years of arcade games, they still had to be rather simple, yet addictive. In 1982, Deities thought, well, these kids love video games, and they love burgers, so why not combine them? And lo and behold, Burger Time was born. Or actually, it was originally just called Hamburger in Japan. Yeah, cool game names were still in the infancy stage. The idea of the game is really simple. You control Pete, who has to knock down various layers of burger in order to form a complete one. Why these pieces of burger are piled above each other is a mystery, but that's the least of Pete's problems. His kitchen has been invaded by Mr. Hot Dog, Mr. Pickle and Mr. Egg, mutant walking food that kills Pete upon contact. Pete can cover these evil buggers with some of his limited pepper in order to stun them, or if timed right, he can crush them under a falling section of burger. Burger Time is a very simple game, yet one which is quite a challenge and very addictive. Data East really came up trumps with this classic. So let's start off the port with the Atari 2600 version. As you can see, and as to be expected, the graphics have taken a massive hit, however the core gameplay is still present. If you can ignore the squares for enemies and sluggish gameplay, then it can be kind of fun. For the short time, at least. television port is actually pretty fast and does play a good game of burger time. I find this version to be rather appealing, even if the burger patties do look like green dog turds. I think anyone playing this back in the day would have been quite happy. I wasn't impressed by the Apple II port would be an understatement. This port looks rather good, as you can clearly see, but what got me hooked was how well it played and how well this port replicated the arcade stage layout. PC version from Mattel Electronics, while playing pretty good, just doesn't have the appeal of the Apple II version. Maybe it's because of the nasty CGA colours, or that the enemies look like they've been put through a salami shredder. Actually playing this in composite CDA mode does look a lot better. This ColecoVision port is the first one so far that actually has something which resembles cheese on the burger. As you can see, it's quite a colourful port with pretty good AI, although I did notice at times the AI would walk along in a loop. Still, even with that minor gripe, this is a nice port of burger time. The music will probably annoy you though. So 
here we are with the original port of Burger Time to the Commodore 64 and it sucks ass big time. For a start the pepper doesn't shoot forward making it absolutely useless. The sausages look like walking turds with green arms and the collision detection is wonky. But the biggest kick in the balls in regards to this port is that every time you die the playing field resets. That means you have to make all the burgers without being touched even once. What was the developer thinking? Actually, I doubt this was an official port. In 1997, a new version of Burger Time was released for the Commodore 64. This port looks more like the arcade game and plays faster than the original port, but it still sucks. The AI is way too fast and the controls are kinda fiddly. Still, at least this port follows the arcade rules when it comes to making the burger. This is the Amstrad CPC release and I'm quite sure this was not an official release. In fact, as far as I know, Burger Time was never officially ported to the CPC. I guess with this being unofficial, we can forgive its ultra slow gameplay and awful sound and poor controls. Nah, this is just terrible, unofficial or not. Yet another unofficial port and one which is so bad it doesn't even control. I tried every button on the keyboard, Kempston and Sinclair joystick options and even custom joystick options but nothing would work. This is indeed a missed opportunity but by judging how slow the spectrum drew the stage layout I'd say we're probably not missing much. Although the Atari 8-bit home computer version is labelled Burger Time, I find it very unlikely that this is an official licensed port. As you can see, it looks horrible with its flickering graphics and crude character sprites. It's also not much fun to play. Slow and clunky is how I'd describe this version. <laughs> Surprisingly, there's another unofficial Burger Time clone for the Atari 8-bit line of computers, going under the name of Burger Chef. This one looks much better, unfortunately doesn't play that well. This time the controls are twitchy at best, plus the collision detection is awful. Let's take a look at a Japanese home computer port, going under the game's original title of Hamburger. This is the Sharp X1 port handled by Dempa. As we know Dempa are pretty much always a sign of quality and this port is no exception. Well, maybe except for the severe low level of audio. Here's another Japanese home computer port, this time for the Sharp MZ1500. As you can see, it looks very close to the Sharp X1 version and even plays the same. No surprise when you consider this version was also by Dempa.
one of the earlier games on the Famicom and it shows, but then again, do we really need it to be flashy? Not really, this is what you'd expect. A pretty much bare bones version of Burger Time. Nothing more, nothing less. Burger Time was also ported to the Famicom Disk System, but unlike other games that appeared on both formats, this seems to be identical in every way to the Famicom cartridge release, as far as the core gameplay is concerned. I'm surprised that the ZX Spectrum didn't get a port of this MSX version, as it's a lot better than the unofficial rubbish it did receive. Anyway, this is another pretty good port, although with some strange choices of colour. The buttons look more like tomatoes, for example, and Mr Egg is now completely replaced by Mr Pickle? Possibly my favourite version of Burger Time is here on the Game Boy. Just look at how cute it looks. The inclusion of the background music also makes a big difference, giving the game a unique charm that many other ports are missing. Let's take a look at another home computer port, this time for the Texas Instruments 99 4A computer. This port has a lot of points I like about it, such as being able to move while the opening jingle plays, to the animation of the falling food. But there are also a few points that annoy me, such as the disappearing sprites when a few enemies are on the same line. This can lead to a ghost death, as you just can't see what killed you. The resetting music every time a bit of food drops is also annoying. Why did they make it like that? Still, despite these issues, I quite like this port. Bandai were behind this tabletop LSI game. Like most games of this type, it does take a hit in playability. However, the core Burger Time gameplay is present. You can still attack enemies and knock down various foodstuffs in order to make your burger. Not a bad attempt at all. Well, maybe a little tricky to play due to the limited movement available. Oh my god, the Mattel Aquarius looks like something you'd find in a nightmare. All the enemies have these horrible looking skinny legs that just look so strange. Even Pete is basically a block with some crazy looking legs. The whole game is quite frightening. To its credit, the gameplay is fairly good. Let's take a look at all those versions of Burger Time and its associated ripoffs running side by side. 